Samurai Jack is back. What do we think about the first episode? Let's talk about it and see what we've got. It is really cold in here, so if you guys see me shivering or adjusting my hoodie or something, that would be why. Just an FYI. Hello beautiful geeks, how is everybody doing today? This is Lewis coming to you through the power of the Geek Fortress and YouTube to bring you a breakdown review video. And today we're going to talk about the return of the man, Samurai Jack. Now, for those of you guys who didn't know, it just came back this past Saturday the 11th. If I'm not wrong, let me go check that. It was the 11th. My days are a little mixed up sometimes. I can't help it, so forgive me. But it was the 11th, at 11. And for this breakdown, we're going to have my boy Mike from the Geek Review helping us out. Give it up for Mike. Any words, Mike? Hello, everyone out there in podcast and actually YouTube land. Uh, this is your host, Mike of the Geek Review. I will be co-hosting this review episode with my friend Louis of the Geek Fortress. Uh, so this is going to be a review of Samurai Jack that just has come out uh, this past weekend after so many years of ab absence. Um, so this is going to be the very first collaboration between the Geek Fortress and the Geek Review, making it the GF and R review. And I'm actually very excited about this. Uh, Louis is a close friend of mine. He does another review service on his channel, which is the Geek of Fortress. So if you're watching this or listening to this on my channel, please go, uh, please go to his channel on YouTube and subscribe to his service as well. Take a look at some of his stuff. He does some uh, great stuff as well. I keep saying as well because it's so great what he does. Uh, and... I'm just so excited, and I'm sure he is excited to do this special review episode uh, together, working together to do this. Uh, so, I just want to take a little bit of time out and uh, explain what my podcast and uh, my channel does. I review everything and anything on a weekly basis. Um, so, if for an honest consumer review for those people who really don't know where to turn to uh, get a honest review. So you can actually find a link to the my uh, web of my podcast main site just below here in the description. So it's right down there somewhere. Okay, um, it's called thegeekreview.podbean.com. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I do have a Facebook group, and my Twitter handle is at thegeekreviewpb. Uh, another person has at the geek review so don't confuse at the geek review PB and at the geek review for me um, because uh, at the guy who has at the geek review does a different service I've only watched maybe one or two of his things but uh, for the most part me and him just leave each other alone so uh, message me at the geek review PB on Twitter I also, again, I also run a YouTube channel uh, for my more visual demanding podcasts, such as For Honor and Ark Survival Evolved. And you can actually see me getting my butt kicked on For Honor uh, on a near daily basis <laughs> pretty much all the time. I also run a Twi uh, Twitch channel, uh, not so much, but I usually stream to YouTube. So you, you will get instances of messages when I'm run uh, running. A stream to YouTube so please like and su uh, subscribe to my services if you're watching this on Lewis's channel if however you are watching this or listening to this on my channel please go to my friend Lewis's channel uh, the geek fortress and sus subscribe to him as well I'll leave a link to his uh, section on YouTube you can also find hit the link to uh, his website uh, up in the bar above here on thegeekreview.podbean.com it could be up in the top it'll say the geek fortress so please open that up go to his channel and hit subscribe thank you everyone for coming out today and tuning in to listening to the very first cat the collaboration of the gf and r review thank you my good sir so 
for those of you guys who've seen all his information is down below so you guys can check it out but let's get right to our video this episode starts with a jack that we had never thought we'd seen before which we're gonna get more into it in a few minutes but it's a jack riding a motorcycle going through bad guys killing them and not taking names i mean i don't even think he had time to take down the names because they were robots but still that's not the point we have a jack who looks um he's wearing armor he looks different completely different to what we have seen before so the episode opened up in a way that hooked you up instantly which i enjoyed a lot really really a lot but what do you think of jack's appearance in the episode mike hey lewis i hate to interrupt but I don't think the viewers truly understand what the big deal is about the new J Samurai Jack series. So I, I would like to explain why to them. Even for the viewers who actually saw the original series and now it, they didn't pick up the new ser series yet. So uh, the reason why this is a big deal is that it takes place 50 years in the future uh, compared to the original series. So this this is 50 years difference and we can see it in his appearance alone. Uh, we all remember for everyone who has watched the series uh, how clean and uh, organized he was with his look. Uh, he always had that white outfit with sandals he was very clean shaven he his hair was trimmed always up in a ponytail uh, however in the 50 years his appearance has changed drastically so much so that locals uh, who know who he is are questioning who he is because they don't believe he is Samurai Jack he went from that clean and organized look to a more of a wild Mongolian uh, samurai look, a sellsword, a mercenary, or a, a Bushido warrior, uh, which are technically mercenaries, Jap. Uh, he looks positively barbaric. Uh, he has a long beard and his hair is long. He ditched his clean outfit for heavy duty combat armor, like the armor you would see on a typical samurai warrior, uh, which has pockets of weapons on there, as we can see from the episode itself. We also notice his signature sword is missing, which we find out later why it's missing, but uh, I'm assuming it, is, it was in a fight with Aku or maybe a strong minion, we don't know it didn't fully explain it uh, we also see with his appearance he is uh, using technology to his advantage now which he didn't really do before uh, he's using laser rifles and laser pistols gatling guns and uh, he's even riding a motorcycle which is highly uncharacteristic for him uh, because he used to, uh, in any episode where he had to fight somebody, he would always ride in on a horse. So I guess the motorcycle could be looked at as a horse, but it, just from the visual impact of him, he was first showing up on a motorcycle. He very, and it's just, it's astoundingly different from how he used to look. We could also, uh, you see, after losing his weapon within the first episode, that uh, losing it as an it getting broken, that he picks up the enemy's weapon to use, and he that's like out of his character. He never did that before. Uh, he always had this code of honor to live by. Okay, you guys keep your swords. After that, I keep I keep my weapon. I move on. So it's a very uncharacteristic thing. So I'm assuming that all the weapons he has gotten, the equipment and so on and so forth, he has been picking up 
all fallen enemies. Uh, we can also see he looks very, very tired uh, for after living for so many years. And this might have a uh, impact on his appearance. He probably said, hey, look, I'm just so tired at this point. I just, I, I can't do it anymore. So, and again, like, his appearance ch uh, changed so much that the locals are even questioning if he is Samurai Jack. I agree. Now, for those of you guys who have read or have not read maybe the Samurai Jack uh, comic books that came out, this is what it looks like. And basically, if you guys look at that cover, we see an older Jack who has his sword back. Now, uh, as those of you who watch the new episode know, uh, his sword is MIA at the moment. So, these comic books were originally meant to be the end of the series. The way they end this one specifically is, um, spoiler alert if you guys don't want to know, uh, it ends with Jack charging towards the castle where Aku is at, and that's the end of the comic book, and that is what is supposed to end it all. As you guys can see it right there. He says the legend will never die, and then his older Jack going toward Aku. And in this one, Jack actually looks like he has aged. Um, he has age, he looks tired, and he has some people helping him out. Look at that. That's Jack right there. So, why is it that Jack hasn't aged in 50 years? Well, our friend Mike from the Geek Review has a theory. Stage is yours. Well, Louis, I want to talk about this theory that I have about uh, Aku. Uh, I think... From the episode when we watched this, now there's going to be a little bit of a spoiler in here. Uh, when you hear him over the cell, uh, cell phone or the cellular device that this uh, enemy used, he sounds old. And I'm thinking what happened was during one of the bouts that Jack had with Aku, their mortality switched. Uh, so Jack has immortality now. And Aku has, uh, well, mortality. So basically, he's getting older now. And as we can see from the beginning of the episode, or as Jack was saying in the beginning of the episode, uh, it's been 50 years already, and he hasn't aged a day. So uh, I'm thinking that there's, in some way, shape, or form, they not switched so much switch bodies, but switched uh, from being... Jack being mortal to immortal, and Aku being immortal to mortal, which is causing him to sound older and tired uh, compared to Jack still being uh, very young and alert in uh, his current situation he is in. Very interesting theory indeed. So, if they actually did swap immortality, or whatever you want to call it, or at some point it's kind of like a Voldemort Harry Potter thing, where in some sort of way, Aku heard Jack in a way that transfers some of his immortality to him or something like that. The possibilities are endless. The one thing that I do like to point out about the episode is the fact that it managed to keep that feel that we all saw in the original Samurai Jack run. The art style looks just a little different, just because I guess with the time it had to evolve and adapt in order to aim toward a newer audience as well as the ones who have been watching it for all these years. I also like to point out that Jack seems to be in this state of mind which is really messing with his head. He's seeing people dying, he's seeing things that he shouldn't be seeing, and uh, he thinks leaves are people that are drowning in a river. So whatever battle happened that we saw in that little flashback that uh, we were able to catch in, uh, in the first episode when he lost his sword, something must have happened that scar scarred him so deeply that it's now messing with him, not only physically, but psychologically. And I like that they're doing that with the show because we've always seen Jack almost as this force and granted in the original series we did see him go up against some people who basically gave him the works when he was fighting them but in this one we see a Jack that 
he's almost naked without his sword. And we see that perfectly when he fights uh, the metal guy with the flute. Forgive me, I'm forgetting his name. But he does, um, he's fighting him, but he, he's almost lost confidence. So it's a broken jack. And I really cannot wait to see what they're doing with that. Which brings me to my next point. Those seven ninjas that are supposed to be Aku's daughters. What are your thoughts on that, Mike? Louis, my man, I want to talk real quick about the new enemies Samurai Jack, or Jack as we know him, uh, will be facing in this new series. And it's not your typical robot assassin like uh, I'm sure the viewers or the listeners know from the previous series. Uh, he, it seems he will be facing a group of seven ninjas, or they could be possibly assassins. I, I'm going to call them assassins because that's more accurate, I would say. So, these assassins, these seven assassins were specifically trained from birth to kill him. Being, uh, being put through the harshest and harshest of training. Uh, you know, I mean, not like your typical training. I'm talking more like Spartan style training. Where they go, they beat on the kids, they toss them around. Um, and, and we can see from the uh, from the episode that they were shooting arrows at them. They were pretty much tossing them off cliffs, trying to kill, uh, technically kill these girls. Um, these girls were bred and trained to kill Samurai Jack. Um, and from what we understand, for all of us who did watch the video, uh, the episode, um, so far. There, it's a septuplet, seven or seven babies born from the uh, same mother, mo mother that are possibly uh, Aku's children, which is strange to say the least. Uh, we also can see that these cultists, uh, children that were born into this cultist family, um, they're all females. They're all uh, made up of females, and they b strongly believe. If these seven kids, the kids, the children of Aku, go and kill Samurai Jack, that he will come back to rule, uh, uh, as in Aku will come back to rule. And none of us, YouTube cha uh, channel viewers, my Podbean listeners, me or you, we don't want him to come back. So, this is going to be a very uh, cool interaction between these two forces pretty much duking you out however right off the bat we can see in one of them uh, which would probably be the leader of the group at this point uh, they, she shows some uncharacteristic uh, behavior uh, according with the rest she really wants to just live and be free she it doesn't look like she really does have the killing intent in her uh, so she seems like more of a peaceful sister out of anything else. Uh, so this kind of leads to me that there, this might be a physical or romance type attraction that might happen within the series. I'm not, uh, I don't like it, but I'm not for it either. If they decide to do it, okay, all power to them, but it, this is, it would really take it away from what we would be used to seeing which yeah and, and i know in one of the older episodes he did interact with aku who uh, happened to look female but in this case he would be interacting with actual actual factual females so it's hard to judge if we want to see a romance between these two characters uh specifically and uh, honestly, uh, I'm not against. Uh, again, I'm not against it. I'm not for it for either. I, I, I want to see how this all plays out uh, between the uh, these assassins and uh, Jack. Maybe they turn around and go and attack the cultists, defeat the cultists, and they send back to, uh, Jack back to the past. Or uh, maybe uh, the one girl joins him in the past as his wife. Or we we don't know. We don't know. So. 
I, I can't actually again I can't wait to see the interaction between these two groups or foreign groups at this point very interesting now I am looking forward to see how he fights uh, all this uh, ninja girls what I'm thinking is that maybe they're going to dedicate and, and maybe I'm wrong but maybe they're going to ed dedicate like every episode he's gonna fight two or maybe three or one at a time I don't know I don't know how they're gonna do that but what I do know is that these girls these ninja girls were trained in a way by a coup indirectly uh, we don't know their origin yet we don't know if they really are a coup's kids uh, or if maybe um, a part of a coup is actually in them so whatever the case may be I trust the writing of the show to take it to a point that I'm gonna be like holy crap what a twist M. Night Shyamalan style you know but I really like the possibilities of what could come out of this I am very excited and I believe if I had to give this particular episode a score in my opinion it would be a 9 out of 10 and I know what you guys are thinking why a 9 we're not a 10 you you, you enjoy Samurai Jack and your reaction video you enjoyed it so much you were freaking out and yes I was see I, I really was but the point is I like it but I feel like for a first episode they showed us enough, but they didn't show us enough at the same time. I, I don't know how to explain that better, because I know it sounds weird, but I believe that before I knew it, the episode was over, I was like, wait, what? And I understand it's the hook, so I can watch next week, but I do believe that you could have given me a little more, throw me a little bigger bone or something, you know? Um, uh, they kind of showed us how the sore went MIA, but I would like to see more as far as that goes. But we're going to have to wait and see. Good job, Cartoon Network. You have me hooked. I will be there Saturday night at 11 watching so I know what's going on with Jack. What score would you give it, Mike? Well, between me and you, Lewis, uh, right off the bat, it's going to be hard to actually rate this episode. Uh, I love the original series, so... If we're talking about the original series, I would say it's 9 out of 10, just because they never actually finished the series. But when they they pick the series back up, uh, which is now, I want to know more about it before I can even say, oh yeah, I'm going to give it a rating. But so far, uh, we see these all these things that are going on. So right now, I really want to say it's a 9 out of 10, because... There's still some missing information, but uh, for now, I'll give it an 8 uh, out of 10. I respect that, 100%. Well, as you guys can see, different people, different ideas. I personally do believe that, as I said before, Samurai Jack it's going to do amazing. And if they keep the writing the way it is, it's going to tie everything up nicely and end the show in a really good way the creator already promised us that he is going to end it in a way that everybody's going to be happy so that could be two things it's going to be kind of like a breaking bad ending when everything did tie up you know boom 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 and you almost had no questions or it could be like a lost ending when yes they tied everything up but at the end you're like did i just watch Hopefully, it'll be the former, because I like my shows to be peacefully in my mind, so I don't wake up at 3 a.m. on a Monday night thinking, Whoa! I wonder what happened to Jack. Yes, shows have kept me up at night before, in more than one way. Don't judge me. But what do you guys think of Samurai Jack Season 5 Episode 1, The Return of a Man Jack? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, if you want to check out Mike's information from the Geek Review, it is down below as well. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please don't forget to be your own judge. Even though I'm here giving you a review, you don't have to listen to me. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you hated the premiere of Samurai Jack. Whatever it is, let me know in the description down below. There is no wrong opinion and there is no right critic, if that makes sense. 
I don't like to refer to myself as a critic. I just like to review things based on my fandom, as well as the opinion that I have and general knowledge that I may have of the subject. But with that said, guys, thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. See? Yes. 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 That looked kind of wrong. Give us a like if you guys enjoy it as well. And again, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that little notification bell so that you guys can see every time I upload a new video. As per usual, guys, you guys have been awesome. Do not forget to stay awesome, my peeps. And geek on. Lewis out. You guys heard that? It's snowing here, so the plow pass. I need to get out of me just a little bit. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.